My name is Apoorva and I work with Civic Data Lab. At Civic Data Lab, our goal is to make public data sets more accessible and actionable. So, uh, you can, um, the way we will do this, we will read the code, we will first understand the code using GitHub and we will also uh, try to see how we have uh, structured this code here. So the first thing we are doing is we are sourcing all the libraries. Now let me also open the our R console just so that we can see how we can run this code as well. So this is our R console and we have the same code that you saw here. The same code is here. We have opened the same file in R studio. So the first thing you see is first we are sourcing all the libraries. Now why is this re required or why is this needed? Now for every R project, it's very important to have a list of libraries at one place. So that you do anyone who is then, um, you know, uh, reproducing your code, they know what are the kind of libraries you're using and they can install all the libraries at once. So if I go to this file, which is uh, source uh, libraries dot R, I go here. Uh, this file is present in the code directory, as you can see. And this is the file that I have that I have created. So you can see the list of all the libraries that we are using for this session or for the for the project. And here, what we are doing is we are sourcing all the libraries at once. So if I just run this line, so this will load all the libraries that we are using in the project. And I have access to now all the functions within these libraries. So I, I, as I told you before, I have already downloaded the raw Excel sheet here. So the raw, this is the path to the raw, raw sheet. Now, because I have created this project, I don't have to mention the entire path. I can uh, mention the relative path, which is th so the where, where the raw data file is. So the, the, the raw data file is stored within the data directory. There is another raw directory inside the data directory. And then you have the Excel file. So I have listed the path here. Uh, now, this is just uh, the function I'm using here is to uh, because it's an Excel file An Excel file can have multiple sheets. Uh, so just to make sure that that I have access to all the sheets or the total number of sheets that are present in this file. I'm using this function called Excel sheets. Now, if, if I run this function, uh, which is from the read Excel package, if I run this function and if I look at the output of this function, you will see there are 543 sheets available. Uh, because there are 543 um, uh, entries inside this vector, all, all underscore sheets or variables inside this vector. So this basically means that the Excel file has 543 sheets. Now, uh, as we, as I mentioned before, how we are going about processing this data is we will write code to process one sheet and then we will run that code for 543 sheets. That is how that is our uh, basic process to uh, process this data. So uh, I'm creating a function here. Now, the, the need to create a function is because I have to run this function for multiple, I have to run this function multiple times. So that is why it's better to, you know, create a function and then just write some sort of a loop that runs this function multiple times. So I have created this function get underscore sheet underscore data. Now let's just try and look what, what is this function doing? So the first thing is that I'm just printing the name of the sheet because imagine if I'm running this function again and again, this statement will help me um, see, okay, which sheet is getting processed. So that is why that is the use of this print function. Now there are the only important, the most important thing inside this function is how you read an Excel sheet because reading a csv file is very straightforward there are read underscore csv is the package uh, or is the function that is inbuilt in r but reading an excel file can be a bit tricky sometimes because excel is uh, not an open format it's a it's a proprietary format and then but fortunately uh, there are packages inside r that will uh, help you read an excel file so in this case we are using the read excel package so there is the function read underscore excel now this function can take multiple arguments here we are using two arguments the first one is the sheet itself or the name of the sheet and the second one is the path which is the path to an excel file so you give the path to an excel file and you give a sheet name and that will read an excel sheet for you and then we are also converting this excel sheet to a data frame so this is how you read an excel sheet so once you have read a sheet uh, then you will i'm again going back to the excel sheet 
so the way we are going about processing this code is so let's say if i have to get the name of the state and the code of the state now i know that for every sheet the name of the state is present in this cell which is row number 2 and column number 2 similarly the constituency name is present in this cell similarly ma uh, male candidates and female candidates are present so there is a fixed position to every variable so the only thing we are trying to do here is uh, if you see we have created these variables state name constituency name number of polling stations dates polling etc and then we know that when where in this excel file these variables are stored in which cell so we are just reading this variable directly from the location of the those cells so that is the logic that we are following for reading some of the variables here uh, so if you can see that uh, we have also listed the rows for each data point so candidate rows elector rows voter rows and number of votes because these are the four sections if you see the excel file again so these are the four sections so the candidate rows are here the elect th this is what we mean by elector rows this is what we mean by voter rows and this is what we mean by votes rows so that is how we are we are uh, reading so basically we are just taking sheet underscore row which is our excel sheet and candidate rows this is the the uh, the number of rows that we are reading and this is the column that we are reading so row number and column number will define each cell and that cell will the value of that cell will be stored in this particular variable which is which in this case is candidate calls candidate under calls underscore value underscore men which is basically total number of male candidates so you will find uh, we we are following the same process for all other variables as well uh, so i will skip this part because this is uh, so when you run this code you will easily understand you know the kind of uh, the, the way we are creating this data frame uh, and in the end what we are doing is in the end what we are doing is uh, we are just combining all these variables we are just combining all these variables in a data frame so you see that this is all calls and this is the list of all the calls that we are using and then this is all the values so imagine this is just this is creating one entire row so column num, uh, column name and then value column name and then value so this is how we are creating this data set uh so before i run this Uh, for 543 sheets it's also important to look at how an excel sheet is read so what i'll do here is i'll i'll just uh, run this for one sheet so i'll first uh, run this line to uh, store the value of constituency master path then i'll probably copy this uh, this line from here go to my console paste it here uh instead of sheet underscore i'll just use a sample variable x so i'm using read excel read underscore excel function the sheet okay so in as you know we have already stored the we have already stored if if i look at the all sheets function now all all the sheets are all stored here so let's let me just run it for one of the sheets which in this case so1-1 so again i'm copy pasting the uh excel function so instead of sheets i am using all underscore sheets and i i want to use the first value and the path is constituency master path which is the path of the excel file and i'm saving this in the variable called x and i'm converting this to a data frame so if i click here now because we are using dplyr and all the tidyverse set of packages here i can you know use the function this way which is i can use this magitar symbol and then you know run uh, attach functions basically uh, all i can do in just one line instead of writing li uh, code again again and again so if i just click enter and let me look at the structure of how the so there looking at the structure of this so i can also use a view x so this is how an excel file is read all right so you can see here this this structure is very similar to what we had in the excel file so that is what that is what will happen if you read one excel file now now uh, let's look at what will happen 
so this is the first function so um, uh, excuse me this is this this is the function that we have written to process data from one sheet and now let's understand another important section of this code which is how we will run this function for 543 sheets so here we are again using something called as map underscore df which here is a sort of a loop what map underscore df does is it will take this function which in this case is get underscore sheet underscore data which is the name of the function and it will take the uh, other variables this is the other variable which ne which we need here if you look at the function we need two variables to process the first one is the sheet name and the second one is the path of the sheet so going below i know that uh, so I know this. So be, how I'm executing this is the the first thing I'm doing is. So let me just copy this function to make it more easier for you to understand. So I'm copying it in my console here, and I'm just running the first part, which in this case is constituency master part, and then Excel sheet. So this will give me the list of all the Excel sheets that are present. So then I'm piping. So you can call it piping. You can call it attaching whatever. Then I'm piping this list of Excel sheets. to the map underscore df function which will run get underscore sheet underscore data for all the 543 sheets all right so this is how this function runs so if i run this function uh, so let me just uh, try and run it for probably uh, one or two sheets uh, so that you can also see the output that we get so i'm just i'm using a head function so that i can use the uh, run this function for only two excel sheets so if i click on this uh, and if i run the function so let me just uh, the function has executed and let me now check how many rows or and how many columns are there in the constituency master df so there are there are two rows and 88 columns and i can also look at the output here constituency master df and you can see that we have converted that ugly uh, excel output to a very structured uh, output and then you have all the variables that were present in the excel sheet in this uh, in this particular data frame now since we have run this for two we can run this for n number of sheets uh, so i'm just removing this head from here and so now if you run this will run for 543 sheets and finally what we are doing is we are just exporting this file as a csv and at the end what you will get at the end you will get a file which is very similar to the file that we saw here and here because this is on github you can also search the name for your constituencies because i am from jabalpur i will just search for jabalpur and this is the you will get all the details of jabalpur constituency uh, uh, in 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 this in this file all right so let me just quickly summarize what all we uh, what all we did in this session so the first thing we did was we went through the uh, project website now this project website is an excellent uh, resource for you because it has links to all the resources that we will use in this session and the second one is the data processing guidebook which will help you process the data now then we looked at the structure of the constituency data set uh and we'll also we also looked at the pdf file and we created a framework where we wanted to reach which is uh we wanted to process this uh, pdf constituency summary data for 543 43 constituency so that we create a file which has 543 rows and then we looked at the code that will help us do it in the code itself we looked at two important things the first one being how you read an excel file and the second one being how you can use the map underscore df function from the tidyverse set of packages uh, the name of the package here is pur which is p u r r r uh, which you can use to uh, you know run this function now you may ask there are other ways also to you know run a loop a very simple way to run this loop can be a for loop so basically you write a function and then you execute a for loop 543 times that is one way the other way which is uh, kind of in built in r without you don't have to use any any packages is you can also use the apply family of functions or you can use uh, to be more specific you can use l apply 
now you will use l apply in the very in a very similar way and let me quickly show you the syntax for that as well so you will write l apply and you will write the list which in this case is uh, all the excel sheets so instead of map underscore df that you see here you will just use l apply uh, so let me just comment this out and you will use l apply and you will use the you don't have to write the list name because it's already loaded the function you will use is get underscore sheet underscore data you don't have to use path because we are using the same path the excel path is not changing but if you have to use you can just uh, copy paste this line and this is an alternate another alternate of uh, map underscore df but since we would like to use the tidy verse set of functions and also this is a small data set but in larger data sets, you will also notice, uh, you know, an improvement in the execution time as well, especially if you use some of the tidy verse set of functions, but that really depends on the context. In this case, it won't matter because we are working with a small data set.